I've got the world's cheapest PCI 5.0 SSD in my hand right here, and I hope it becomes the new normal for future SSDs rather than the exception. Ever since the first models came out in 2023, PCI 5.0 storage has been super expensive. We're talking like $125 to $150 per terabyte for almost every single PCI 5.0 SSD out there. There are drives out there that offer better bang for buck than that. Some will only charge maybe like $115 per terabyte, but the catch is that you need to buy the two terabyte variants rather than the one one terabyte variant. Uh, whenever you're buying storage, if you're buying the lowest capacity model possible, uh, the deal isn't so good. You're going to get worse value, worse bang for your buck. Uh, this happens with pretty much all storage, including PCI 4.0 storage, where like, you know, those normally start at uh, 512 gigabytes. And if you go up to like one terabyte, well, it only costs, you know, maybe 50% more. It's a similar situation with PCI 5.0 storage. You pay 50% more for about double the storage, uh, give or take some percentage points. The thing is the lowest capacity PCI 5.0 SSDs are one terabyte and they start at roughly $150 while the two terabyte models start at roughly 215, sometimes 230, depends on what model you're looking at. Compared to PCI 4.0 models, that's obviously a pretty poor deal when you're considering capacity, but even considering performance, it's not that great either because it's not like PCI 5.0 SSDs are like twice as fast as PCI 4.0 SSDs. They're closer to like, you know, maybe like 30, 50, maybe even 70% faster. But that's all in the past now, thanks to PNY CS2150 SSD. This PCI 5.0 drive is in the 10 gigabytes per second band of performance, which is the low end for PCI 5.0 drives. The one terabyte model starts at just $100 and the two terabyte model is $185, making this easily the cheapest PCI 5.0 SSD on the market right now. PY's ability to offer this level of performance for what is a relatively low price point is probably thanks to a combination of choosing cheaper components that are still capable of PCI 5.0 performance, as well as the generally declining cost of these components used for building PCI 5.0 drives. Inside the CS2150, you'll find one of Fizon's E31T controllers, as well as some Kyoxia NAND flash. Both of these components help drive down the price. The E31T controller is specifically designed to be lower end than the E26 controller that you'll find in pretty much every other PCI 5.0 SSD. And also Kyoxia NAND flash is going to be significantly cheaper than the flash made by Micron, which is used for pretty much every other PCI 5.0 SSD. Like to drive the point home that lower end components were really necessary to bring down prices, uh, pretty much every PCI 5.0 SSD up until this point used the same combination of the E26 controller and Micron flash memory. It was just too expensive to support a price point as low as $100. Additionally, the CS2150 lacks DRAM and instead it just uses a host memory buffer. By contrast, every other PCI 5.0 SSD, like the ones I mentioned that have the E26 controller and that Micron flash, well, they are paired with about, I believe it's two gigabytes of DRAM per terabyte of storage, and that definitely drives up the price on those drives. Drives. Interestingly, the CS2150 actually isn't the first SSD to come out with these exact same components. Corsair's MP700 Elite actually launched in November, a month before the CS2150, with the exact same E31T controller and Kyoxia NAND flash, except its one terabyte model costs $150 rather than $100. And it's pretty weird to see such a wide price disparity when we're talking about the same exact drive. To me, it seems like PNY is sacrificing profit margin so that it can rack up more sales and sell more SSDs. Additionally, PNY's brand isn't quite as prestigious as Corsair's, so it probably can't command quite as much of a price tag as the MP700 Elite can. So with the CS2150, PNY is promising PCI 5.0 performance with lower power consumption and the lower price tag. Now they sent in the two terabyte model, I actually wanted the one terabyte model because it's just $100 and I was super curious if it was good or not. Unfortunately, they didn't send that in. They sent in the two terabyte model, but of course we did put it through its paces in our gauntlet of tests. As always for SSD reviews, we're using our LGA 1700 test bench with the Core i9 1400K ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM clocked to 5600 megahertz. The 1400K continues to be the best CPU for letting storage be as fast as possible, so we're sticking with it even though it's over two years old now. In addition to the CS2150, we tested seven other SSDs, three higher-end PCI 5.0 drives that predate the E31T controller, and four PCI 4.0 models. Drives that didn't come with their own cooler used the motherboards built-in heat sinks. Those that do have their own get to use their own. We use half a dozen different benchmarks for testing, which we're going to go over now. We're opening up with the gaming half of the test suite, starting with 3 Mark storage benchmark. This test goes over things like loading and saving game files, OBS recording, and installing games. Here, we can see the CS2150 is definitely much faster than PCI 4.0 SSDs, but lags somewhat behind the other PCI 5.0 models. It's even slower than the Firecuda 540, which is another 10 gigabytes per second drive. I'm guessing this is a consequence of not having a DRAM cache. 
Next up is 3 Mark's latest direct storage test, which basically measures how much more bandwidth an SSD offers when direct storage is in use. This technology isn't used in many games at the moment, but in the future it will go mainstream eventually. Anyways, the CS2150 sits between the PCI 4.0 and other PCI 5.0 drives like before, but it's practically tied with the 540 and not far behind the CS3150 and the MP700 Pro. That's a much better showing than in the regular storage benchmark. And for our last gaming test, we have Final Fantasy XIV's Dawn Trail benchmark, which measures the time spent on loading screens. With the exception of the FireCuda 530R, every SSD landed between 5.5 and 6.5 seconds. Even though the scores are pretty close in general, we can still see that the CS2150 slightly lags behind the other PCI 5.0 SSDs. But considering we're talking about tenths of a second, the slower performance isn't that much of an issue. Moving on to our transfer speed test, we have Dispatch, which we've configured to move the Witcher 3 game files from one folder on an SSD to another. This means that each SSD had to read and write at the same time, which tends to make for a tough benchmark. Here, the CS2150 just about tied the 540 and fell slightly behind the MP700 Pro and the CS3150, which we've seen before. Notably though, the MP700 Pro was only about 10% faster and the CS3150 was only like 5% faster, though the 2TB model likely would have been also 10% faster, just like the MP700 Pro. That's a pretty good place for PMY's cheap PCI 5.0 drive to be. Next we have Crystal Diskmark, a synthetic test that runs reading and writing operations separately and also has configurable testing variables like Q depth and sequential workload versus random. We're just using the four default tests here. In the sequential one Q depth test, the CS2150 didn't do too hot. Its writing performance was roughly between the PCI 4.0 and 5.0 drives, but its reading speed was barely any better than the budget PCI 4.0 SSDs that we have. With the Q depth increased to 8, the CS2150 does better. Its writing performance is on par with the 540, and although writes were a gigabyte per second short of the 540, they were still well above what the PCI 4.0 drives can muster. Switching over to the random test with a Q depth of 1, the CS2150 is straight up in first place. It's got slightly better reads than both the PCI 4.0 and 5.0 drives, and its writing performance is a fair bit ahead too. Finally, we have the random 32 Q depth test, which is never very kind to PCI 5.0 SSDs. For unclear reasons that I haven't really had the time to investigate, high Q depth random tests and Crystal Dismark just do not go well for PCI 5.0 drives, and are much better on PCI 4.0 models. Our last test is Iometer, which we use to hammer each SSD with a constant writing operation, but instead of testing our SSDs when they're empty, like in the other five benchmarks, we fill our SSDs and then run the test because writing speeds fall as more capacity is taken. With our SSDs filled up 10% of the way, we can pretty clearly see that the CS2150 is in fourth place, though the other PCI 5.0 drives aren't exactly performing consistently. In fact, the 540 shows lots of variability after about the three minute mark, and that's thanks to thermal throttling. The other two PCI 5.0 SSDs have active cooling and don't see a reduction in speed. Looking at the average speed across the whole test, the CS2150 was once again in the middle of the rival PCI 5.0 drives and the PCI 4.0 models. It was actually quite close to overtaking the 540 due to that thermal throttling issue, and it probably would have been faster if we tested for just a little longer. The 50% results are where we see writing speeds quickly drop off, though the CS2150 held on to its peak performance much longer than the MP700 Pro or the CS3150 did. When it did finally drop, it was actually ahead of both the 540 and the CS3150, though the 540 eventually recovered. The CS2150 lost to the 540 this time around, but it did score a pretty big win over the CS3150. I believe this result indicates that PCI 5.0 SSDs with just a terabyte of capacity struggle in iometer, but I don't have another one terabyte drive to confirm this. Things often get weird in the 90% filled test, and that was certainly true of the CS2150. It was pretty inconsistent after its peak speed was exhausted, exhibiting performance spikes throughout the run. In the end, this cost the CS2150 pretty heavily, and it ended up being slower than even the MP600 Pro and H, a top end PCI 5.0 SSD. The 540 was over twice as fast by contrast. We also collected temperature data from our 10% iometer run, and temperature is a useful metric to look at not just to see how hot our drives get and whether they overheat, but also to get a sense of power consumption as heat is a direct byproduct of power draw. Compared to the 540, the only other PCI 5.0 SSD we tested that doesn't come with its own cooler, the CS2150 was vastly superior. It barely climbed above 60 Celsius, while the 540 easily hit 80 Celsius and started thermal throttling. The CS2150 wasn't quite as cool as the 07000, but it was mostly the same temperature as the MP600 Pro and H, and it was also much cooler than the 530R. I think that's a pretty significant win for PNY here. So the CS2150 is significantly cheaper than other PCI 5.0 SSDs, but it's also a fair bit slower too, and compared to PCI 4.0 SSDs, it is significantly faster, 
faster, but it's also a fair bit more expensive. Is this SSD able to make this middle ground play work here? I think the answer is yes, and that PMY really threaded the needle here. To start off with, the CS2152 terabyte is about 75% of the price of competing PCI 5.0 models, which means that in order for it to be a decent value or even just an equal value, it needs to have at least 75% of the performance. On the whole, it was able to meet the 75% target and in many cases actually exceeded it, though in a couple of instances, it did fall short. The CS2150 also has the benefit of running pretty coolly, more like a higher end PCI 4.0 SSD rather than the typical E20. 26 powered PCIe 5.0 SSD. This is the kind of drive that you could actually picture being inside of a laptop once they have PCIe 5.0 support for SSDs. Like it would never make sense to put a Fire CUDA 540 inside of a regular laptop because it would just thermal throttle really easily. Now it gets more complicated when we start trying to compare it to PCIe 4.0 SSDs because I don't have the one terabyte variant of the CS2150, so we don't know exactly how it performs. Now PMY rates the one terabyte variant as barely any slower than the two terabyte variant, but I don't know if I fully trust them on that. It, it's a little bit more complicated than just what the box says. The main issue the CS2150 has against PCI 4.0 SSDs is that one terabyte models of these 4.0 drives, they perform about the same as the two terabyte models. Anyone who's just interested in getting a high performance PCI 4.0 SSD, they don't have the splurge for the two terabyte model, they'll be fine with the one terabyte model and they'll have saved a lot of money. So the CS2150 two terabyte at $185 is competing with PCI 4.0 SSDs that can be found for $100 or less, but it's not like twice as fast, it's only like 50% faster, which on a bang for buck basis makes this a relatively poor deal, at least when you're just looking at performance. But when you look at PCI 4.0 SSDs with two terabytes of storage, the CS2152 terabyte actually starts looking pretty good. At $185, it's actually about at the same price point as many two terabyte PCI 4.0 drives. And in fact, even the cheapest PCI 4.0 SSDs with uh, two terabytes of storage, they're not that much cheaper. I think you maybe could find a few for like $110, but most of them are gonna be like $130, $140, $150. And I think I even saw a few that were almost $200, more expensive than the CS2150. And the two terabyte SSDs that are like 50 to $70 cheaper. Those are things like the O7000 and the Y7000 Pro, which are fine, but they do suffer from really poor sustained writing performance. Surprisingly, PNY manages to pull off a pretty complicated balancing act with the CS2150 2 terabyte. I can definitely recommend this SSD if you need lots of fast storage for a relatively low price. Anyways, that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed our review, then please like the video, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do here at Silicon Insights, then please consider donating to our Patreon so that we can keep the channel online. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.